All right, so we're here today with uh, Steve Willems and Brian Cole, partners of NAI Keystone, to do our um, industrial update and commercial um, office update for the commercial real estate sector. So I'll let you guys take it away. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, or our screen. All right, Megan, can you see that? Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. All right, well, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm gonna start with the uh, office market report um, and uh, Steve will jump in with the industrial side. So um, what we wanted to talk about a little bit is kind of from the end of 2020 coming into 2021, uh, but end of 2020, uh, we started seeing a pickup in the markets um, across the board, um, but primarily because businesses started to open up. Um, one of the things that I, I think you know, really helped us, and I think a lot of people can agree to this, is that the PPP loan uh, that came out for small businesses was, was pretty important, um, not only for our tenants and clients, but you know, for, well, across the board, for tenants and clients across the board. Um, we, we only lost, well, we feel we only lost one tenant um, during the shutdown. Um, well, because of the shutdown, but honestly, you know, we, we thought that um, that could have been because of COVID or it was something that happened prior, but uh, we we're very fortunate to only lose one tenant during, uh, during the shutdowns. Um, for the most part, all of our tenants stayed in place uh, and continued to make all their rental payments. Uh, and as of today, we're fully up to date with all, with all of our tenants. Now coming into 2021, we were a little nervous and it's, it's one of the topics of you know, most of our sales meetings are, you know, what did people see coming into 2021 or, um, you know, what, what were the plans uh, to, uh, um, you know, combat any potential issues. But uh, we were very fortunate coming into 2021. Uh, we had companies that were expanding um, that we quite frankly didn't, didn't expect um, and maintaining their locations. So, uh, Let's see here. Let me, do we have, let me grab our stats. Yeah, here's our office rates. So what we ended up doing, what, well, what we do to put together our office reports is we track uh, suburban office buildings and downtown office buildings. The suburban office buildings, we track 78 class A and we track 209, uh, 229 class B buildings for a total of 7.4 million square feet of product. And downtown, we track about nine Class A office buildings and 40 Class B office buildings for a total of 2.5 million uh, square feet of product. Uh, for those buildings in the suburban market, our rental rates uh, for, for year to date 2021 are averaged at about $23 a square foot. That $23 is a modified gross number. Uh, so that includes, that includes all operating expenses with exception of utilities and janitorial. So that uh, went up just a little bit. It did. It did. So you so can, in COVID, you actually had a rent increase. We do well from not during COVID, but coming into 2021, okay. we started seeing an increase in the rental rates. And quite frankly, we needed to because of the cost, the construction costs increasing, operating costs uh, increasing. We needed to uh, we we needed to up our rental rates to offset some of those additional charges. Now, one of the things that we have been doing is in lieu of upping our rental rates, we've been offering additional incentives like free rent, um, some additional TI dollars, but we've been looking for a little bit longer term to, to offset that. So as far as our downtown, um, I'm sorry, our class B suburban office rates, we've been at about $18 on our low end, 2075 or 2350 on our high end and 2075 a square foot. Uh, on on average, mm -hmm. and that's also an increase across the board. Is that or is that no, these would be modified gross modified as well. Gross. Yeah. Uh, as far as our vacancy rates overall, we also had a drop in the vacancy rates. So uh, for our Class A suburban buildings, we we're at an average of about 4.2 percent uh, for 2020, and that dropped to about 3.75 for 2021 or year to date 2021. Uh, as far as Class B suburban office buildings. Uh, that also had a drop down to 17.2%, uh, with an average of about 10.5% uh, across the suburban market. Uh, downtown, 
uh, we've had 12 and a quarter percent uh, for class A and 21 and a half percent for class B, giving us that average of 16.88. Now there's a number of changes taking place in downtown. Some of the manufacturing industrial buildings are going to have a large office component. Some of the office buildings may have a residential component. So those buildings, we haven't factored into our total numbers yet because we're not sure what it's going to look like, but uh, that those those class A and class B downtown office numbers. So like the Madison building exactly. is going to be converted to residential. And so you'll lose the office component. Correct. Correct. And now you're and that office on the first floor may be converted to a retail gotcha. or some some sort of hybrid office retail um, asset or something along those Makes lines. Sense. Yeah. And then of course the Reading Eagle building, I think they're they're looking at doing some of that in manufacturing space may become office retail. Mm -hmm. So we just can't factor it into our numbers yet until they have a clear understanding okay. of what's going to happen. So, um, but overall the office market is, is doing very, very well, um, much better than what we anticipated coming into 2021. Um, and we're hoping it just continues for the foreseeable future. So, okay. Great. All right. So I will, Turn this over to Steve, and I'm going to unshare our screen. All I, right. wish I, I wish I had slides. Sorry, guys. No <laughs> slides. That's all right. Just, I, just I, I butchered half of those anyway. Yeah, so. No, no, no. <laughs> so on the industrial side, great news. Um, despite the COVID, the surge toward e-commerce. E-commerce was already on a, on a good climb. COVID hit. It went like this, like a rocket. It's like the rocket that went up yesterday um, and it came back down in 15 and it minutes. Came back down. And that's good. In one piece. Um, so in the last year, last 12 months, we've absorbed over 4 million square feet, 4.1 million square feet of industrial. 1.3 million of that was in new construction. Uh, that's a lot of new, new construction for our county. Uh, historically, we have not been at, at those numbers. Uh, our vacancy rate right now is 4.25%, um, which is very, very low. Um, it, it well in line uh, with other areas around us in the region. Uh, we're in a good spot. Um, for landlords, the best news is we've finally seen some rent growth, a um, little over 8% um, in annual rent growth. Um, some places it's been more like 10 or 12, depends on the asset itself, how high the ceilings are, how location, things like that. Um, so, you know, rent growth is a big, is a big thing. The absorption rate is huge. Um, there's a lot of deals in the, in the market right now that don't have homes. Um, there's three 25s or two 25,000s and one 18 to 25. Um, there's a 90, there's a 75, there's a 125, um, and there's just simply a handful of buildings to pick from that makes sense. It's very hard trying to put the uh, square peg in the square hole, you know, when there's just not that many properties to pick from, but it speaks to uh, how tight the market is. Mm -hmm. the, the tightness of this market has actually forced some of our local companies uh, to build to look towards new construction, which is good because you get what you want when you're done. The problem is new construction is coming at a time uh, where material costs are going up quickly. Um, we're seeing longer lead times and, um, and some of the spikes um, in, in material costs have been problematic, uh, really problematic with, um, with deals. You get your financing in place and all of a sudden the steel shows up and other components of it, and you go up 10, 15%. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it's a, it's a problem. Uh, it's, it's a good problem for growth, but it's a problem. Uh, the most significant challenge today uh, in industrial is the same as in most other businesses. It's the lack of, of full-time employees and part-time employees. Um, uh, we deal with a lot of plant managers, a lot of owners. And I mean, I, I, I know plant managers that could take 150 people if they had them. I, I have one company that just hired 50 people could use 100 more. I mean, there's just a, a, a lack of um, FTE. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Uh, market's tight. We're trying to find ways to, uh, 
to meet all needs. Um, there are a few properties for sale. The pricing on the for sales have gone up as well. Um, it's hard for some buyers to digest when they look at the existing rent rates, but rent rates are growing. Um, and we don't think that uh, this last recent spike is, is it's not a trend that's gonna change anytime soon. Yeah. The market has changed um, and e-commerce has a lot to do with that. And now that the uh, other spaces are absorbed, it's the supply and demand. So un unless something dynamic changes in the market, we're gonna see those trends continue. So it's yeah. a strong market. Call us, we'd love to help uh, work with you and uh, find something that makes sense for your business. If you have a property, uh, call us. Let's talk about uh, how to advance and what the disposition is of that property. Thanks for, uh, thanks for visiting. Yeah, today. thank you. Do you guys wanna take any questions if there are any? We can, sure. If anyone has any questions, do you wanna either type them in the chat or you can unmute yourself? I have a question. Hello, Pam. Hello. So, you know, there's gonna be no silver bullet to um, solve the issue of inventory, which I also know that a lot of my colleagues across South Central Pennsylvania and Southeast are experiencing as well. But what things can we do as a community um, in order to encourage um, more development and um, what do you think that looks like? And, and how long do you think it's going to take till we can um, realize some additional inventory? Because I agree, there are needs out there that do not have a place to land. Yeah, I think on the industrial side, you're, you're two years out to massage this problem out a little bit. Um, what can we as a community do? I think that uh, local municipalities, boroughs, and townships can take a hard look at their zoning um, and their entitlement process. I realize that a township doesn't control all facets of the entitlement process, but they do uh, much of it. Um, uh, those have gone through the process. You know it's not for the faint of heart. It's, mm -hmm. it's difficult at the best um, and it's horrible at the worst. We have Internally, we have a list of yeah. townships that we will not talk about online because I don't want to get, um, uh, don't want the retaliation, but um, there are some that are very, very difficult. Make your ordinances achievable, livable, support what you want to do. If you want to have managed growth, yeah. manage where the growth is, put zoning in place, put entitlement processes in place that are easily achievable, mm -hmm. readily achievable. Uh, for people to do that. Um, some, some areas it's barrier after barrier um, and others less so. So supportive zoning, um, making sure that we have infrastructure uh, in the right places and that's where Pam and, and, and your other um, agencies um, that support economic development uh, can help, you know, making sure we have the correct infrastructure to support positive local zoning yeah. and entitlements. Yeah, I, I, and I can't agree more. I think, you know, at the end of the day, most of it is, is on the industrial manufacturing side. As it relates to office and medical, I think we have enough inventory here now. Medical seems to be going more retail oriented anyway. So they're kind of veering away from your traditional office, office campuses. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of new construction happening for, uh, for the medical side. And then as far as the existing office, I think we have enough product, at least in the Berks County market, to support the businesses that are here now and, and, and what their growth can be. So, so obviously on the industrial side, distribution, manufacturing, that's where there's uh, quite a bit of more, uh, quite a bit more opportunity on, on the land side. Brian, I thank you for your last comment, which was going to be my question. What do you think, especially about the office inventory in the downtown? I mean, obviously it looks like it's going in a mixed use direction. Do you think that's going to be positive for the city and start to move the needle? I do. I think it's a great thing. You know, when you have that amount of office space and in, uh, that's available in downtown, you got to find, find other redeveloped, uh, redevelopment opportunities. And I think going mixed use is going to be important because it's bringing more residents downtown 
it's driving to the some of that retail and office that may be going into those buildings. So I think doing a mixed use, and you see it in, in other uh, larger cities, mid-sized cities across the country, that they're they're turning their downtown office buildings into a into a mixed use. Um, and when that happens, setup. it supports so a host of other businesses. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of other businesses are involved in that. So it's, it's, it lifts, lifts everything. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's going to be good for downtown. And, and I think you'll start seeing more businesses being attracted to it. And, and, and it would be nice to see some of the larger national users go to downtown. Maybe not the retail ones, but um, on the office side, I think it'll, it'll be important. National retail as well, but uh, more so on the office side. Are there any other questions? All right. Um, thank you, guys. We've, our phones yeah. are on, and uh, we've got a great team of people here. Love to help. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining us.